We're talking to Joseph Kaczynski, the director of Tron, and I, now I understand this was actually your first directorial assignment. That is true. Actually, I, I don't know about assignment. It's the first film I directed. I was um, I was attached to Logan's Run right before this movie got greenlit. So then I, so that was my actual first contract. But then jumped on to Tron. And uh, at, when when Bob Iger was at the premiere, I talked to him about Tron as both a legacy of the Walt Disney Company and as a hopeful future franchise for the company. Mm -hmm. How aware were you of this when you were making the movie? You know this this whole freighted legacy, and the idea that they're you know they're hoping for another great uh, franchise. Well, that's that that was out of my control. So you know you put those kind of thoughts out of your mind. I just wanted to make the best version of this movie I could. Uh, so you know just focus on the task at hand, and then once it's out there, you know it, it kind of has a life of its own. It, it, it does what it's going to do. Now, uh, one of the features on the uh, DVD uh, that's just uh, just coming out, and the, the Blu-ray digital download, mm -hmm. all of the great technology that they have for this, includes a little feature called Tron Roars. Yeah. And uh, you actually got to direct how many people at one time? I think it's somewhere between 6,500 and 7,000 people, which was uh, definitely one of the highlights for me. Uh, pretty fun, fun experience. Uh, I, I was actually in Hall H. Awesome, so you're in the movie then. Yes, you're my director. I was. And I was. Uh, and uh, we got to see something that we didn't get to see before, and that was some of the reactions of the panel as the crowd was roaring and chanting and uh -huh. carrying on. What was it like up there on that stage with 7,000 people all shouting together? It was um, the level of control uh, over 7,000 people. I've, I've never experienced anything like that. It was, it was weird uh, to, uh, to have that many people so focused because uh, they knew they had a shot of being in the movie if they did exactly, uh, exactly as directed. So it was, um, it was pretty awe-inspiring. Uh, I got a little power drunk, I think, at the end. It was... It was uh, it was fun though. It was great. It was exactly what I hoped it would be, you know, because it was like literally two weeks before Comic Con. I was like, "How are we going to get the sound of a crowd saying these specific lines?" I was talking with the Skywalker people, and they're like, "You just—that's the hardest thing in, you know, audio, because like you can go to an arena or a sporting event, but no one pays attention and they don't care." And I was like, "Comic Con, that's it. They'll all, you know, they're those are the right people who are going to do what we want and." Um, you know, it worked out better than I could have hoped, and we were able to put it all in the movie. So this was your idea? Yeah, yeah, just like two weeks before. So see, you you are a great director. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that's, that's the proof right now, there. Now, that's just one of the features on this DVD release. It is just stuffed with features. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, do you have any particular favorites among all of the special features that they've added? The second screen stuff's pretty cool, um, just because of the level of detail it goes into, all the way down to the storyboards, you know, I did, and the, um, you can just see the amount of work and concept art that goes into kind of creating a movie like this. Uh, so I was really impressed with that. I was also happy to, um, to be able to go back to Skywalker in January and, and remix the soundtrack uh, for the Blu-ray, because there's a lot of little things I wanted to fix that I wasn't able to for the theatrical release. So the Blu-ray actually has a, a newly kind of remastered audio track. And uh, another one of the features that has caused quite a buzz on the internet is The Next Day. Yeah. And, I thought uh, they did a great job putting that together. Um, it, it hints at some of the, uh, you know, the story outside our film, or the, the story that surrounds our mm -hmm. film, and a little bit that happens afterward, uh, which is, is nice because, um, uh, you know, it hints at uh, you know, potential futures of, of of our story, potential next chapters, which I think is exciting. So dare I ask, is there going to be more to the Tron story on the big screen, do you feel? Uh, I, th I think there's definitely potential for it. You know, we are, we're currently working on some ideas um, and some stories that, that we think would be interesting to tell. Um, there's still, you know, more to be done in the Tron universe with the, the animated show, obviously this Blu-ray release. Um, uh, so we'll see, you know, once we once we get a script together that we're really excited about and, and if we can assemble the, 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 the best team again, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd love to go back. Well, again, people are also, you know, they're very excited to see, uh, you know, a lot of people immediately noted in uh, uh, Tron Legacy 
the presence of Ed Dillinger Jr. Yes. The group I was with nearly clonked heads in the yep. theater as soon yep. as we heard his name. And then my daughter noted, she says, that's Killian Murphy. Yeah. A uh, major star, unbilled, mm -hmm. uncredited mm -hmm. in this cameo role. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the next day, we see one of the characters from Deep in the Past, Ram, uh, played yeah. by Dan Shore, who yeah. is the, the actuarial, the yes. nebbishy little program yes. who kind of rises through the ranks. Yeah. Do you uh, do you do you know if these two uh, performers have been uh, been kept in the loop, or well, or are we yeah. just in hopes right now? I mean, the the Tron universe is bigger than than Legacy. Um, so with Ed Dillinger Jr., you know, I was excited to to um, show that the Dillinger legacy is still alive out there, and hinted that even though it's not to be explored in our movie. Um, I was excited to at least be able to keep that storyline alive as a parallel storyline, um, and the same with you know Dan Shore's character in the in the next day short. Um, so uh, both are great kind of characters to seed for for the next chapter, um, and uh, you know that's all I can say right now. Okay, well thank you very much. Thanks Congratulations on. Getting Tron Legacy into the theaters. I know Steve Lisberger worked on it for many years. He did. And thank you for uh, spending some time with us. Thank you.